How to paint a running horse? Let's see in today's video. Hi, this is Modula, the artist behind Modula Creations. In this video, I am going to give you lots of tips to approach a running horse painting. Take notes, listen carefully and then successfully paint a running horse. I will be painting a white horse and I am also going to show why white horses are always not just white in color. We will be using multiple shades and colors to define the structure of the horse. First, let's start with the drawing of the horse. We don't want each and every bit of the detail, but I would like to have the uh, skeleton of this horse marked so that it's easy for us to paint. So basically, we will do the body, the face and the legs. So once you finish the initial drawing, we will start to paint it. The colors I'm using here are raw sienna, white, pine is grey, burnt sienna, black, earth green, cadmium yellow and primary magenta. The first step is to layer the colors as per its value. So I'm not going to concentrate much on the exact shading of that particular area. Instead, I'll be just concentrating on establishing the values between each of these areas. So I'm not going to use all of the colors, I'm just going to use three colors maximum, the raw sienna, pine is grey and white to just establish these relationships. Horses are highly intelligent and social animals and also there are 600 horse breeds in the world today. So when you paint these kind of different horses, you might have to adjust the characteristics of the face or the body according to the type of horse that you are trying to paint. Moving on to the final leg, let's just fill that with the colors. And let's finish off the horse basic view with a tail. So once we are done with the values inside the horse we will start to paint the background we'll set the background fully and then we'll come back to the horse for the background i'm using a earth green burnt sienna and black for the brighter areas i also touch a little bit of cad yellow i'm just showing that it is a very dense area at the background so i'm going to fill it fully with these type of colors if you are new to acrylics here is my free guide on color mixing for beginners which has all the basics and tips for color mixing you can download it from the link guide.modelacreations.com i will also leave a link in the description below let's continue to paint and finish off the background so i'm using the same colors i am painting in the night so there is a ring light over me I thought it has a lot of reflection over the subject so I just raised the canvas so that you can see it without reflections from the light. I am using a filbert brush to fill the entire area. Some of the places I am going very lighter, not to the lightest though. And then let's start to fill up the foreground. For the foreground, I am going to make it little more brighter at the foremost area and in the midground, I am going to keep the same colors as I did the background. So it is going to be a darker green with a little touch of black. At the foreground, it is going to be a cad yellow with a touch of earth green. I am retouching some of the areas at the background to make it lighter or darker depending on the shades that I need. And once I finish that, we will start with the horse. So for the background, I am not changing the colors, I am just changing the values here and there. I am using the same colors, the black, earth, green and the yellow. Now let's start with the horse. So the horse has different areas, right? And the hair in different areas looks quite different. So the front uh, hair this is called as the forelock this is where we have that hair that is falling off the face i'm using a white and a raw sienna to do the hats we will continue to add the shadow finally 
so you can design it any way you want you can have the hair at one side of the horse or both the sides of the horse here i'm planning to do on both the sides and you can also show the main hair uh, in a different direction so that all depends on what the direction of the horse is running because we are trying to paint the running horse there is a very interesting bet along the galloping of horse it all started with a question of a person asking does all the four of the horse hooves leave the ground during a gallop so this question was actually raised by leland stanford he was one of the founders of the stanford university which is a very popular university unlike him other academics said at least one hoof will be on the ground always so there was a bet around this and to prove his point stanford hired a professional photographer his name was moy bridge moy bridge faced a challenge because at that time this all happened during the year 1878 there was no moving camera and cameras cannot capture such fast movements in that uh, period so what moy bridge did was he devised a new method he had 12 wired triggers attached to 12 shutters of 12 cameras and he was able to capture the galloping movements of the horse it was then proved that stanford was right all the four hooves leaves the ground at some point of time on one side sanford won the bet and on the other side moy bridge idea led him to invent the early device for displaying motion pictures from where cinematography was born so there is a very big link between horses and cinematography especially the galloping horses and cinematography as i start painting the body i'm just using the same colors along with burnt umber to get the darker areas of the horse for the mouth and the nose part i'm using a touch of the primary magenta to show the slight pink shade of the nose and the mouth when you're painting a running horse few things that matter is the position of the legs and the position of the body and the muscular structure of the horse because it is running you will have to show more of its muscle more outwardly uh, than just a standing horse so here as you can see the four legs are in different positions and the hair also you will have to paint it little bit of floating and wavering horses weighs around 1000 pounds on an average or you can say it is as 450 kilograms so most horses are below or above this range so as you can see it's a very huge animal with lot of muscular structure so definitely you have to show that kind of a structure when you paint to bring out those structures the first thing that you will do is to use your lights and darks very nicely and wisely in each of the areas so separate each of the areas like the front of front portion muscles uh, the barrel muscles or the stomach muscles there where the rib cage of the horse lies and then the leg muscle so each of these areas have different types of muscles associated with them and each of these areas has to be painted separately considering all these muscles are different from each other when we are painting the front or the back legs the horse legs have different structural areas so for example the front legs have the knee the canon the fetlock the pastern and then which connects it to the hoof uh the coronary band is the area where the hoof begins so we have different parts in the horse leg itself each of them have a different structure so for example the upper part of the leg has a more bulgier look than the center part of the leg and as it goes towards the down it becomes thinner and thinner and suddenly the hoof gets so big so that is how you will have to think about it when painting the legs for the tail we have to just show it more fluffy here the colors that i am using are white raw sienna and a touch of burnt umber 
If you don't have a burnt umber, you can use a raw sienna with a combination of pine is grey or black as well. So yeah, the areas that just touches the body will be more darker and as it goes towards the edge, it is going to be lighter and lighter. As this is a running horse, we will have to show some movement to the main hairs which is on the forehead and at the crest area of the horse which is the neck area. We will also have to show some movement to the tail of the horse. So that is why we have done it little bit floating. Now I am making some of the areas darker and lighter in the foreground and the midground area. Let's show some grasses there. We already have the base so our work is to just show some brighter grasses at the foreground. So this will seem to look like this is a grassland at the foreground and a little more wild kind of a forest area at the background. Now let's start with the eyes. Horses have 360 degrees field of vision uh, as their eyes are on the sides of their head. So painting uh, your eyes, you will have to show the bulging eyes nicely at the sides of the face. It's also bigger uh, than the human eye. Actually, it is eight times bigger. So you'll have to have a nice bulging eyes outwards on the sides of the horse face. We will add some highlight to the eyes. A very tiny highlight is enough because we are not showing the close up face of the horse and if we show a very bright highlight it is going to spoil the entire image that we have done. So a tiny bit of highlight is more than enough for this kind of a painting. The average running speed of the horse is approximately 40 to 44 miles per hour or you can say it is around 64 to 70 km per hour. So it runs faster but then the muscle structure and the movement of the hair and the position of the legs is so very important to do the running horse painting. Of course, the fastest running horse speed recorded was 88 km per hour. So it's really fast running mammal and it is very beautiful to watch a horse run. Here is the finished piece of the running horse painting. If you enjoyed this video, just click on the like button. And if you have any question, do post it in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer all of your questions. If you want to paint a close-up of the horse, here is a painting I did which exactly shows that. Click here to watch it out. Thank you for watching. Happy painting and bye from Modula.